Hello, and welcome to another session on combinational logic. Today we'll look at developing product of sums expressions from truth tables that are Boolean representations of digital logic problems. Combinational logic is that logic which does not depend on time or a clock signal to generate an accurate output and can be used to implement a wide variety of functions ranging from arithmetic, such as addition and subtraction, transmitting data from one form to another, or converting code, information expressed in ones and zeros, from one format to another. The product of sums expression is basically an AND expression can each containing OR expressions within the AND expression. So it's commonly called OR then AND, in contrast to sum of products, which is AND then OR. But just like sum of products, the product of sums can express information in a truth table that contains three possible values, zeros, ones, or don't cares. Don't cares are commonly expressed as x's and are typically outputs whose input combinations never occur, hence making the output for that input combination irrelevant. Let's take a look at how product of sums works. In this truth table, we have one line in the truth table that produces a zero, and the product of sums will only look at lines in the truth table that produce a zero. So here we'll go ahead and take a look at that one zero. And in order to express the term in that second line of the truth table, we'll use an OR to express the term. And if the variable appears as a zero, we'll express it in its uncomplemented form. And if it occurs as a one, we'll express it in its complemented form. In this example, we have only one term, so the output is just that one term expressed in product of sums format. Once we have that expression, we can simplify it, which in this case is not possible because we only have a single term, or we can apply De Morgan's theorem to adjust how do we implement it. So inherently, the product of sums produces an OR gate implementation here. If we want to express it using only NAND gates, we'll have to double invert our signals. And that will give us X inverted. There are now two inversions to Y, which will cancel each other out. And then we'll have an OR gate with fully inverted inputs which will be equivalent to a NAND gate. So we can either express this term, x or y naught, with a single OR gate and an inverter, or a single NAND gate and an inverter, depending on what we prefer for our logic implementations. In this next example, we have three possible inputs and a truth table that has eight input combinations, which produce three lines in the truth table that have a zero at the output. We can come up with a product term for each line in the truth table that produces a zero at the output using the same technique we did in the previous slide. This first line will simply be x or y or z. This next line that produces a zero will be x or y naught or z. And this last line will produce x naught or y or z. To come up with a complete product of sums expression, we then AND all those expressions together, x or y or z, ANDed with x or y naught or z, and x naught or y or z. Now if we multiplied this all out, this would give us a little bit of a mess to simplify. And that's why the product of sums is not preferred over the sum of products, because oftentimes there's a lot more work involved in simplifying the expression. But in truth tables that don't have a lot of zeros at the output, a product of sums expression may be worthwhile. 
Let's take a look at an example where that's the case. So here we'd like to find a product of sums expression for the warning light in the dashboard of a car. The light turns on when one or more of the doors is open. In this case, we only get one zero in the truth table. The warning light is off only when all four doors are closed. And if we take a sum of products expression for this variable warning light, we would have 15 terms in our sum of products, whereas the product of sums would only produce one term corresponding to the first line in the truth table. Since all the variables are equal to zero, they all appear in their uncomplemented form in the product of sums expression, and that's much easier than generating the sum of products expression looking at the 15 lines in the truth table that produce a 1 at the output. So here we've looked at an alternative way to generate an expression to represent the function in a truth table, the product of sums, which is or then and in contrast to sum of products, which is and then or. Most of the time, sum of products is preferred. It's easier to simplify, but sometimes product of sums is useful, especially when there are very few outputs in the truth table that produce a one, or produce a zero, excuse me. Well, that's all for the product of sums implementation today. Thanks so much for joining us as we continue to explore the world of digital logic and circuits, and we hope you'll join us again soon.